where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has hidden unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. I'll have to admit, when reading through the Bible in my early years, I did pretty well through Genesis and Exodus, but Leviticus would be where I got stuck. I'd often give up or try to speed read through the laws and punishments and sacrifices, all those long, boring details. But this time, God gave me some jewels. I was surprised to find quite a lot of treasure, yes, in Leviticus. One phrase that was repeated frequently was, I am the Lord, 46 times, depending on which version you have. God would give a law, and then at the end of the verse, he would say, I am the Lord. It's like when my kids were little, and I'd tell them to do something, and they'd say, why? And I'd answer, because I'm your mama, and I told you to. We had long talks on how God put me in authority over them, so when I told them to do something, it was for their own good, because God gave them to me to take care of. Not only did I have authority, but I also loved them, which meant they could trust me. That's kind of how the Lord is. Everything he told them to do was to keep them safe, to keep them in right relationship with him, to keep them in the right perspective on life. And they knew he loved them so much, and they knew they could trust him. Why? Because I'm the Lord, that's why. He has the authority. Many times he would identify himself by saying, I am the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. He was referring in one phrase to all he did to bring them out, defeated the Egyptian gods with all the plagues, transitioning them from the group of slaves to a nation of people that were his special treasure parting the Red Sea for them to cross over on dry land, then destroying the whole Egyptian army. So that one phrase reminded them how powerful, awesome, amazing, and victorious their God was. It also reminded them not to get him confused with the gods of the surrounding nations. They'd never done anything for Israel. Those idols hadn't miraculously freed them from slavery. The stone carvings hadn't fed them or given them water in the desert. The marble statues hadn't led them with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Why would they even want to worship those things when they had a powerful, loving God? In Leviticus 26, 12 and 13, God tells them the perks of obedience to him. I will walk among you and will be your God. You shall be my people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be their slaves. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you walk upright as proud children of God. So many of Israel's experiences mirror ours. Theirs were physical and ours are spiritual. God tells us that he wants us to be his people. He wants to walk among us and be our God. He tells us, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the bondage of sin. I suffered and died on the cross to free you from the addiction, fear, anger, depression, guilt, or anything that held you in bondage, so that you would no longer be slaves, but free children of God, able to confidently and boldly walk with your head held high. Are you walking upright today in confident obedience to your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Only God can give you peace, hope, joy, everything you need to live as His child. If you have any questions about how to become His child, please write. You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com and check out our new website. You can find the address in the description below. I'm Carla Early, and thanks for listening. And remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.